Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Cyril Turner. I'm the MLA for Spruce Grove and Stony Plain and the Capital Region Caucus Chair. And I'm extremely excited to be joined here by a number of regional mayors from the community of Strathcona, the city of Leduc, the town of Beaumont, the city of Spruce Grove, the city of St. Albert, and of course, joined by Deputy Mayor Rice from the city of Edmonton. I'm also pleased to be joined here by Minister Sawney today, as, as well as Minister Nally, ML MLA's Rutherford and Lovely, and of course, our local Edmonton MP, Randy Bossano. Today is an extremely important day for municipalities in the region and all across Alberta. Reliable and dependable transit systems took on significant losses during the pandemic because fewer people were riding buses and trains to get to work, schools, or to visit family and friends. Municipalities have struggled for two years to deal with that financial setback. As a three-term city councillor and a long-term resident, I know firsthand the impact transit can have. It's becoming a necessity for many who need to get their groceries or for those who have to travel to Edmonton for their jobs. For growing urban centres like Spruce Grove, this is so important that transit continues to operate. So I'm pleased to be part of a government that is helping municipalities recover their pandemic shortfalls. To tell us more, I would like to welcome the Honourable Rajan Sani, Alberta's Minister of Transportation, to say a few words. Minister? Thank you, MLA Turton, and thank you, everybody, for being here today. I would especially like to thank all of the elected officials who are here today to join in this great announcement. It is, it is a pleasure to be here today to follow up on a recent announcement I made regarding funding for cash-strapped municipal transit services. As you know, we recently entered into a partnership with the Government of Canada to provide municipalities with nearly $159 million to help offset losses to transit revenue, which has severely affected their operating costs. Alberta's government is matching the federal government's support and will be providing $79.5 million to the program. I'm pleased to inform you today that the City of Edmonton will receive $66.9 million from this program. The City of Calgary will receive $82.4 million. It's no secret that municipal transit systems suffered losses during the pandemic with people working from home and using transit less. Ridership in Edmonton dropped by more than 40% during the pandemic while in Calgary, ridership plummeted by a staggering 51%. As people start returning to work, public transit is a critical component to Alberta's economic recovery. Public transit is an essential service, in particular for students who are returning to on-campus learning, for seniors who are accessing medical services and other vulnerable populations who may be re-entering the workforce to get to and from work or re-engaging in social activities. This funding is over and above other public transportation funding provided to municipalities by the government. I'm happy to announce that the paperwork has been completed. Municipalities have been notified of requirements and we are ready to move forward. Alberta will administer the Alberta Relief for Shortfalls for Transit Operators, or RESTORE, program through grant agreements with qualified municipalities. While the major cities of Edmonton and Calgary suffered the most financially through the pandemic, we are providing financial assistance to many other municipalities. Funds will also be distributed to 24 other communities across the province, including St. Albert, Strathcona County, Grand Prairie, Wood Buffalo, Red Deer, Lethbridge, and Medicine Hat. This funding renews our commitment to assisting municipalities particularly to support services that took a direct hit from the pandemic. Alberta's government is proud, very proud, to step up and offer this help to our municipalities. I would also like to thank our federal counterparts for realizing the value of these much-needed programs. Thank you, and now I have the pleasure of welcoming Minister Boissonneau from the Government of Canada to the podium. Thank you all. Hello, everyone. Bonjour, Tante. 
to wow, I would like to begin by acknowledging that we are on Treaty 6 territories, which is a traditional gathering place for many diverse indigenous peoples, including the Cree, Métis, Blackfoot, Nakota, Iroquois, the Dene, the Salto, the Inuit, the Métis people, and many others whose histories, language, and cultures continue to influence our community today. Minister Asani, thank you so much for pulling this together and bringing us all together. Deputy Mayor for the month of April, Councillor Rice, <laughs> Mayor Heron, your assembled worships, all of the MLAs who are here today, and um, uh, MLA Turton, the last time I think you and I shared a stage, we had to do a Métis jig together, so we, we won't have that entertainment value today, will we? <laughs> okay, not today. Um, look, friends, colleagues, thank you for being here in this spirit of partnership. We're here to share some great news for Albertans, and it's about accessibility for reliable public transit to make sure that it's uh, essential to all of our communities coming out of the pandemic. And as you can see, the number of people using the line today, this is an important link for people to get to and from work, to get about their business, to go shopping, to do what they need to do. And these lines, these transportation networks connect people and they let them, you know, get to where they need to go. Essential services, to go out and have a good time or to simply get home after a hard day's work. Yet for too many people right here in Edmonton and across the province, the impact of COVID-19 on reliable and affordable public transit options made the difficulties of the pandemic even more profound. And as Associate Minister of Finance and as Minister of Tourism, and Alberta's minister in the federal cabinet, I want to just share with you that the federal government understands this and that we have your backs, just as we had through the pandemic. So together today with the Alberta government, we are stepping up to deliver much needed financial support to cash-strapped municipalities and to transit systems hit hard during the pandemic. The government of Canada and the government of Alberta will be providing matching funds, each of $79.5 million, for a total of nearly $159 million to support transit in 26 municipalities across Alberta. So in February, on February 17th in 2022, we announced this $750 million fund to address municipal operating cost shortfalls in public transit with two other clear requirements. The need for our partners in the provinces to be able to join us in this funding and the need to accelerate work to build more homes. And this is an example of all orders of government delivering. And I have to say, municipalities in Alberta are doing very good work when it comes to creating more housing. And we want to see that partnership continue. So from Edmonton to Calgary, from Lethbridge to Wood Buffalo, from Banff and Lake Louise to Canrose, this funding is going to help make life more affordable for Canadians. It's going to keep the lines running and it's going to come from commitments from the Alberta and Canadian governments. And it means that people can focus here on Alberta, which is where they want to take their lives and their careers and their work next. It's going to make sure that students have easier access to in-person classes and that small businesses around the province will make sure that their workers are able to get to work and to see a steady increase in customers as we all learn how to live with this global pandemic. Nous sommes en 2022 et connecter toutes nos communautés est devenu essentiel d'un point de vue interpersonnel et économique. Et aujourd'hui, notre annonce de partager uh, 79,5 millions de dollars uh, avec l'Alberta pour presque 160 millions de dollars pour le système de transport en commun, c'est une grande annonce pour l'Alberta et pour le Canada. And Minister, while this announcement's going on, I want to thank you and all of your MLA colleagues for standing up for your FIFA commitment. So if you would please thank the Premier publicly and um, because I know that when the time comes and should the uh, wonderful FIFA organization choose Edmonton and choose Alberta, I know that we will continue to work together in partnership to welcome the world to Canada and to Alberta once again. So thank you everyone for being here. Merci beaucoup. Hi, hi, and without further ado, I'd like to pass the mic over to Councillor Rice, who is Deputy Mayor for the month of April. Over to you, Councillor Rice. Thank you so much, Minister Rundi. And welcome, everybody. And to Edmonton. Look at how many uh, our guests here. Uh, thank you so much to our Edmonton and with this beautiful weather today. Um, 
Today is an exciting day and for our Berda cities, including Edmonton. This incredible announcement of $79.5 million from provincial government will combine with pro previous announcement, announced funding from the federal government to ensure municipal transit services continue to run at full capacity. This is great news and for our city and for transit and for our riders. So I cannot stress enough how crucial, tra how crucial transit is to the health and the well-being of our citizens and to our economic recovery. Transit connects people to the place that matter to them and it gets people to school and to the doctor and it gets people to their families and friends. And most importantly, it gets people to work so they can contribute to the success and the prosperity of our community. The need for public transportation has been even more apparent over the past two years as we have uh, navigated the COVID-19 pandemic. Efficient and reliable transit acted as a lifeline and for so many, so many people who could have otherwise been isolated and unable to access basic services. And while ridership was known throughout the pandemic, we are opt optimistic it will recover as we are start starting to see a gradual increase for our ridership. We are continuing to listen to public feedback to adapt to transit network to meet rider needs, and we are make international choices to ensure intentionally choices and to ensure our transit system remains safe, efficient, and convenient for everyone. As a city, Edmonton understands how vital an efficient transit system is to our economy, and we remain committed to work in the partnership with all orders of government. Thank you very much. And as we embark, embark on this next stage of the economy recovery. This is why we are so grateful and for the, fun, for the funding and be announced today. This money means we can continue investing in a strong, safe, and reliable transit system and work together on a full recovery. On behalf of City Council, I want to extend my appreciation to the provincial government for their ongoing support, and we're looking forward to working together to continue offering this essential service. Thank you, everyone. So it's my pleasure to welcome uh, St. Albert Mayor and Mayor Han. Hello everyone, I can't tell you honestly how excited and happy I am to be here today representing Alberta municipalities. Um, we were overjoyed in February when we heard that the federal government had this program and I think probably a couple calls and begging to Minister Sani to match it. We are so pleased that this has all come together that two levels of government can support the municipal level of government in this time of need. Not only am I the president of Alberta municipalities, I'm also the mayor of the city of St. Albert. We uh, operate what I thought was a huge transit system, but I've been told it's a small one, St. Albert's. <laughs> but the 700,000 plus dollars that we're getting from, from this restore program uh, is welcome news. So we have had been hit very hard by the pandemic. And a municipality really only has two choices to make up the difference or the loss of revenue. And that is, of course, raising property taxes but at this time and this need, we really are trying to avoid that and not push this burden back onto our residents. So the other choice is to cut service levels. And that turns into a vicious cycle. 
If you don't have an efficient transit system, if the buses aren't frequent, if they're not well maintained, you lose ridership and you, then we, we're in a downward spiral. spiral. So this money will be used to reinvest in transit in St. Albert and municipalities across Alberta to make it efficient and make it the right choice for transportation to and from work and to try to avoid the single car use for the environment, you know, for infrastructure, for costs. It's great news for everybody in the entire province of Alberta. So thank you very much. And I am going to introduce Wade Coombs, who is the Director of Transit for Strathcona County, another small <laughs> transit system, but he also is here representing CUTA, the C Canadian Urban Transit Association. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it is my pleasure to be here to represent the Canadian Urban Transit Association as their Vice Chair of Small Systems. And I, as uh, mentioned, I'm also the Director of Transit in Strathcona County. Um, CUTA represents 18 systems within Alberta, which includes our two large systems, Calgary and Edmonton, as well as 16 small systems. You've heard some of the names mentioned here, and I want to mention even a few others. We have some very small systems like Coal Lake, Alberta, Hinton, Okotoks, uh, and Cochrane, um, along with all of the other ones that have been mentioned here. On behalf of CUTA and our Alberta systems, I want to thank our ministers that are here on the federal and provincial for your support and uh, ongoing support. This isn't just the first time. You've been great partners with CUTA uh, for a number of years. And again, we thank you for that support. I especially want to say thank you, though, to our province, as we were the first, you were the first, to sign on to this. And other provinces have followed. But I want to thank you for your leadership in taking that initial step. So thank you. The pandemic has showed the importance of public transit in our communities as, as we provide it safe and reliable transportation for many, including frontline workers who had a critical role to play in keeping our grocery stores open and stocked, as well as those that help keep our hospitals running. The pandemic challenged our systems and impacted our revenues, which ultimately impacted our budgets. For example, the small systems, and by the way, that's systems with 95 buses or less, so every system in Alberta other than Calgary or Edmonton are classified as small systems in, for Kita. But we saw our revenues drop by 40 to 50 percent. Sorry, 60 to 50 percent. In, in 2022, that was just last year, our revenues have still been impacted by uh, around 50 percent when we compare them to 2019 pre-COVID. Transit has worked hard to maintain the appropriate level of service to keep transit as a viable transportation option over the past two years. This operating support that we are receiving from both levels of government will allow our systems to maintain our current service levels as we continue to adjust to meet the travel needs of our communities. Again, public transit is an essential service that relies on many people to keep our systems safe, uh, safe and running. For those who clean the buses, fuel and maintain them, to those who provide operational, customer service and administrative support, I want to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of them for keeping our systems uh, safe and running and a viable transportation option for our residents. As a close, I just want to thank again to our two ministers and their governments for the support they provided to our transit systems here in Alberta. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Wayne Coombs, Mayor Kathy Heron, Deputy Mayor Jennifer Rice, Minister Sonnies, and Bostono for your comments and words today. Today's matching funding will fuel a much needed economic recovery for cash strapped municipal transit systems. And I'm grateful that this support will help 26 communities around Alberta, including the city of Spruce Grove in my riding, which is receiving $113,000. I just want to thank you for joining us this afternoon, and now it's time to take some questions from the media. And thank you, MLA Turton, and to our speakers as well. Thank you. Uh, we will have a question and answer here. Um, we will open up the mic on the floor in just a second, just to uh, mention to the reporters uh, on the line with us this afternoon, uh, if you'd like to ask a question, you have to hit star one to uh, enter the queue. Curious if uh, any of the media here with us this afternoon, anybody on site want to ask a question? Just step to the microphone, please. 
And if not, that's okay. Operator, could you put through the first caller this afternoon? Hi, good afternoon. I'm not sure if this question is for Minister Sani or Minister Boissonneau, um, but I'm hoping that one of you can provide us with a little bit more details on the housing component of this agreement. Are there new housing plans that it had to be agreed to to get access to this money? And, and what specifically does that mean for Edmonton? Well, thanks very much. It's uh, Minister Boissonneau. What we wanted to do as a federal government to meet ambitious targets for housing is to incent municipalities across the country to reduce red tape, to make sure that the permitting process is sped up, to increase the approval of housing units so that we can meet the um, increased housing demands. Just to give you a, an important data point, we're going to be welcoming 1.3 million newcomers to Canada over the next three years. And in, 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 in addition to the uh, housing that uh, Canadians want, we're going to have more people, more people coming to Canada. So every municipality that can step up and demonstrate to us that they're going to speed up their housing application and permitting process is going to qualify for this funding. The reason that Minister Sani and I are able to be here today and have this announcement is because we have really good actors at the municipal level in Alberta when it comes to housing, housing affordability, making uh, investments in social affordable housing. And so Edmonton, Calgary, other municipalities represented by the mayors who are here today are doing their job and their work. And so this is an Alberta success story for transit, for the environment, and also for housing. Minister? Thank you, Minister Bossano. And I just did want to emphasize that this particular agreement is not contingent on any agreements related to housing. And of course, Alberta did announce their 10-year housing strategy as well through Minister Pond. So housing is a concern uh, amongst all levels of, go of government, and certainly Albertans are looking to leadership to ensure that we do have more housing options available. Thank you. And did you have a follow-up? Um, yeah, I guess this one is for, the, for Deputy Mayor Rice. I appreciate that the $67 million is a significant amount of money for Edmonton, but back in February, the city was asking for about $80 million to make up for the transit shortfall. What is the city going to have to do to make up for the difference? Uh, so I would like to say, and then uh, as, a, as a city, and uh, we really appreciate this opportunity and this support assistance and from uh, federal government and provincial government as well. And I believe our city has a plan and to cover all the shortfalls and for the housing and for other supports we need provided and to our Edmontonians. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Uh, I believe that might be all. I don't think there is anybody else online waiting to uh, ask a question. So thank you to everybody and enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Ready? Yeah. Myself, Ramanjit Sedu, I'm from Connect FM Edmonton. My question is open to you, all three. So we have been talking about climate change, and there is a significant part uh, of pollution which is created by transportation. But whenever we talk about the local level uh, transit systems, we are just trying to beat up the, with the increasing volume of traffic, with the increasing number of passengers. We are just trying to catch up with those numbers, but do we have such some kind of lofty targets available? Any program to curb the pollution levels through this transit system? Yes, please. Hi, Ramanjit. Uh, 
Hi, Manjeet. It's good to see you again. Uh, you know, that's a good question. And I, what I can tell you is that when we are encouraging more Albertans to use transit systems and LRT systems, that in itself has an impact on emissions. When we encourage folks, instead of driving cars or other vehicles, and to focus more on transit, that has a tremendous impact. And certainly, Minister Bossano will talk more about uh, the federal goals around uh, uh, emissions reductions and their climate policy. But I can tell you that from the government of Alberta, we're obviously very concerned, and transit is an important component. It's a social determinant of health, and we'll continue to encourage folks to use the uh, transit systems because it does have an impact. Thank you. I'm also going to open up maybe to Kathy Heron, Mayor Heron, who's also the um, chair of the Alberta Municipalities, to comment on this and what's happening across the province. Um, but it's a great question, and let me just start with the emissions reduction program. So we know that transport is 25% of national emissions. Oil and gas is 26. So if we can get both of those sectors to reduce, it's a major accomplishment for our green uh, gas reduction emissions. At the same time, and you'll notice in the emissions reduction plan, we have ambitious targets to get to 65% of heavy and light duty vehicles and consumer vehicles by 2030 electrified. So think about the heavy lift. And we put, I think it's $6.1 billion in this budget to make sure that we get to those numbers. Now, why does that matter? It's because we've got battery factories here in Canada now that are being stood up. We've got the critical minerals that we need for those batteries. We've got the most number, we've got the greatest quantity of critical minerals outside of Asia. And I can tell you, people are interested. The Europeans are interested, the Germans are interested. I met with Senator Manchin in Sunday, uh, Sunday in Calgary about this issue. And the United States is very interested for us to be able to uh, see how we want to mine those critical minerals. But as I, as I said to the Senator, and I'll say to people here, I don't want us to rip and ship critical minerals. I want us to be able to mine them responsibly, to actually value add them before we share them with our allies or put them into our own projects. So the cities are on board, the provinces are on board, we have to reduce emissions. And if we can figure out how to decouple emissions from economic growth, then that's how we master the evolution of energy. And I know people in this province are going to lead the way. Sure, I can just add a little bit about um, the climate. We, there are no goals, so it's a great question and probably something we should be pursuing. I just had to check with Wade to see if CUDA had some, and he said not yet. But I do think it's really important to, to note that you know a bus full of 50 people is 50 cars off the road. But, but not just that. you know it, avoids infrastructure investment into roads. Expanding roads because of cars is bad for the climate as well. And I also really, I have to brag just slightly, City St. Albert, where I'm the mayor of, um, was the first city in all of Canada to invest in electric buses. And uh, Edmonton has followed suit. And now Edmonton and Strathcona, I was just confirming, uh, are looking at hydrogen buses as well. So, you know, those are really positive steps forward. And that's why I really want to encourage people to try to use the transit system and get out of their single cars. If that helps. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.